Hey everybody, it's Andre again. Hope you enjoyed this video because this presentation took me about two weeks to make. I was just doing this for fun. It's not like a school assignment or anything. And so I thought, hey, why not do piano? So I looked up a lot of facts about pianos. I looked up the history of pianos and a lot of other cool things. And at the end, I'll tell you my musical autobiography. Thank you. Okay, so if we start from the very beginnings. In the year 1698, Bartholomew Cristofori invented the piano. The oldest living piano still around today is a forte piano from 1720. If we keep moving later, we see that the square grand piano was invented. And the square grand piano was invented in London around 1765. And here is a square grand piano from about the late... 1700s. We move right down to the 1800s. We see the evolution of the square grand piano. Shows how it first started and how it evolved into different shapes. The square grand piano model continued all through the 1800s to the year 1900. In the year 1780, the upright piano was invented, and by the year 1812, the upright piano skyrocketed in popularity. Here's an upright piano from around 1858. Looks very different than the upright piano we know and love today. Here is the evolution of the upright piano. From the year 1870 to the year 1930. In the year 1897, the player piano was invented in its original form as a pianola Patented in 1897 by the American engineer E.S. Vody. The player piano was a cabinet called a player piano. So basically the same thing. That was stationed in front of an ordinary piano and had a row of wooden fingers projecting over the keyboard. Here is a picture of an early pianola. Moved down to the 1900s. Piano keys were made of ivory and ebony basically until the 1940s. Then they started making them out of plastic. By the year 1970, they officially banned ivory and ebony by being put on pianos because ivory is made of elephant trunks. So they're basically endangering elephants. I said trunks, not tusks, but that'd just be harsh to make it out of trunks. Here is ivory piano keys with ebony black ones. And here's plain old plastic piano keys. See, there is a bit of a difference. So it's right there. In the year 1983, Rolling Co. developed a mid eye specification which enabled electronic musical instruments from different manufacturers to communicate with each other. And here is a picture of one of the earliest keyboards. So there's a brief history of piano, and now I'll move on to the facts. History and facts about the piano. The longest piano in the world, the Alexander piano, reaches a whopping 19 feet 10 inches. The upright wing and some pianos have five pedals instead of the standard two or three pedals on a piano, which makes them the only pianos with five pedals. Now here are some instruments similar to the piano. The organ, the harpsichord, the melodeon, the celesta, and the Mellotron. Here is the alphabet made out of entirely piano brands. Now if we start from A, it goes from Apollo, Bersendofer, Chickering and Sons, Derivas and Harris, Ellington, Firth, Gordon and Sons, Harvard Piano and Co., Ivick, Jackson, Kimball, Lauder, Madison, Nuns and Clark, Odiota, Packard, and basically, there isn't one for Q. So we'll move on to R. Royal, Steinway & Sons, Taylor Francis, Universal, Van Dyke, Willard Piano & Co., no one for X either, York, and Zetch Jacob. Now, the Stewart & Sons Big Ballora Piano is the first and only piano to have not 88, but 108 keys. It also has four pedals. Now here are some world records. Here's the smallest working piano, and here you see the maker's hands, so you can basically tell how small it is. The maker used like rubber bands, and he 
like use toothpicks and other stuff to like design the hammers that actually strike them. It sounds like a music box, it's pretty cool. The oldest living piano, we just saw that. Here's another picture from the 1700s. So basically the same thing. Now the world's most ornately carved grand piano. This piano is extremely beautiful. If you go onto antiquepianoshop.com and look up an 1888 Blossos and Sons, one of the options you'll see is this piano. They professionally restored it and their shop is in Tennessee. It is so beautiful. Now here's the world's most futuristic piano, also known as the M piano. It is on the market today and it seems like something that would be out of a sci-fi movie. Here's the world's hardest piano piece. It is by Liszt. Here's the world's easiest piano piece. I think it's by a pretty stupid guy. Now the top three best sounding concert grand pianos are Steinway Model B, Borsendorfer Imperial, and Yamaha. You can decide. If you look up this YouTube link, you can see which sounds best to you. And there's a big difference of what these pianos look like. Yeah, there is a huge difference. Here are the top 15 greatest composers of all time to ever live. For 15, we have Franz Joseph Haydn, composer of the Emperor's Hymn. Handel, composer of the Messiah. Rachmaninoff, composer of Rhapsody and a theme of Paganini. Tchaikovsky, composer of 1812 Overture and all the classical songs for the Nutcracker. He had a lot of work for that play. Mahler, composer of Funeral Rites. Verdi, composer of Anvil, Anvil Chorus. Brahms, composer of Brahms Lullaby, you know the dee 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 song. Franz Liszt, composer of Hungarian Rhapsody No. 2. If you want to hear me play that song, look up on my YouTube channel, Hardest Song I Know How to Play. Actually, it's the most popular YouTube video I've ever made. Chopin wrote Waltz in D-flat major. Schumann wrote The Carnival. Schubert wrote composer... Uh, he, oh, sorry. Schubert is the composer of Minispiel. I don't know how to pronounce that. Wagner is a composer of Symphony in C major. Johann Sebastian Bach is a composer of Canada No. 2. Wendy 121. <laughs> Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, composer of Ella Turca. And my personal favorite, and also what most people have said is their favorite, Ludwig von Beethoven, composer of Ode to Joy and for Elise. Another fact, this presentation might be the largest presentation about pianos ever. Because, I mean, my parents ordered this huge box, so... <laughs> it's pretty huge. Now, here are some amazing facts about the piano. The piano is an instrument with 7,500 working parts. This simple instrument is really not simple. It has more than 12,000 parts from which 10,000 parts are moving. When you buy a new piano, it has to be tuned at least four times during its first year of use. The main process of a piano involves a hammer striking against the strings, producing a noise that creates a melody for your ears. Number five. A piano needs 230 strings to contribute to a full range of sound, and these strings bear more than 30 tons of pressure when the concert grand is concerned, even if they're more standard pianos, the tension sums up to 20 tons. The term grand, used back in 1777, the oldest piano in Britain, was made by Americus Beckers back in 1772. This piano is known as the oldest homemade piano. The word piano is actually diverted from the from the pianoforte. Term piano means quietly. Forte means an instrument called the piano, which is very loud. So play to introduce some soothing song calm sounds. Piano is undoubtedly is truly turned as king of the instruments. A pianist can play the lowest range of notes to the highest range of notes on this instrument. Number nine, the piano does have a rich history, but in comparison to the other instruments, is relatively newer instrument. The percussion family is the first piano and was invented by Bartolomeo Cristofori, which we mentioned in the 1700s. Piano keys are still referred to as ivories. However, in fact, in 1940, piano keys were no longer made up of ivory and constructed with plastic. And now that you have seen all the facts, we'll move on to my autobiography. My Piano Adventure, Musical Autobiography by Andre Clark. 
On June 24, 2008, I was born in Northside Hospital, Atlanta, Georgia. Nothing really musical happened in my life back then, but my mom always played classical music on her belly before I was born. When I was one, I visited my grandparents' house. They had a ball went fun machine from the 70s, and even earlier keyboard. So, my nanny turned it on. My nanny is also my grandma. And I pressed a note. My face lit up. My grandma still has a picture of that moment. Somewhere. When I was little, I watched a TV program called Baby Einstein. The show was full of classical music, composers, and even facts. And when I, I was just hypnotized by that TV whenever the show came on. Whenever I visited my grandparents' house while my mom and dad were out of town or on a date, I would cry for hours. My mom had a bunch of Baby Einstein episodes burned to DVDs. So when she sent me over there, she sent the DVDs as well. So I would stop crying immediately. When I was five... Me and my family were watching The NeverEnding Story. By the time the end credits came on, the movie theme song was playing. When my parents looked over to see where I was sitting, I wasn't there. They looked around the house for a bit until they heard the music keyboard. I was playing the theme song to the movie, by ear. I think my mom recorded me. My mom still has that video, somewhere. About a week later, I started taking music lessons at Dance and Music Academy. I still remember the name of my first teacher, Miss Amber. I always wanted to learn how to play Ode to Joy by Beethoven. I always loved Beethoven's music. I distinctly remember Miss Amber telling me I wasn't ready for that song, so I waited. After a few months, I learned the easy, basic Ode to Joy. I thought I was ready for the extremely hard Symphony No. 9 D minor Opus 125 Choral Ode to Joy, but I was wrong. In spring of 2014, I had my very first piano recital. Before I was about to go on, there were some kids on the floor in the front row talking. So when I bowed for my performance, I gave them the hairy eye and told them to shush. I played the basic Ode to Joy that day. Pretty soon, I wanted to play by ear because Miss Amber only taught by sheet music. Pretty soon, I quit Dance Music Academy and got a new piano teacher by the name of David Palmer. By this time, I really wanted to learn how to play for Elise. When Mr. David taught me the basics all over again. He came to our house for piano lessons, and pretty soon he told my mom I needed a real piano, one with 88 keys, because I had a crappy keyboard with 68 keys. I remember we took my grandpa's truck to pick up a real upright piano from a lady in North Georgia. I was picking up the piano with my dad, my grandpa, my uncle Carrie, and my cousin Cade. It looked a, it was a lot of work to haul that big thing in the back of the truck. I was, it was a pretty long ride there and back. But we put the piano originally sitting in our living room, but now it's in our basement. You usually see that in some of my YouTube videos. I continued piano lessons with Mr. David for a long time. I liked the piano lessons at first, but pretty soon I was starting to lose interest. As he noticed, so I, so he noticed. So actually, he recommended another piano teacher, a friend of his who taught by ear, Joe Seidel. One Halloween, when I was either seven or eight, I even dressed, I dressed as Beethoven. We went to my cousin Colt's house for a Halloween party. There was a costume competition, and the winner got five dollars. Surprisingly, I won. I know the five bucks doesn't seem like much, but hey, I was eight then. When I first met my new piano teacher, I had a bad feeling at first. I thought, oh yeah, it's just going to be another piano teacher. I'm just going to have to quit pretty soon. I, so when I sat down at the piano bench, she greeted me by asking me what I wanted to play. I had so many songs just packed away in a huge file in the back of my brain. I would have never gotten where I am today if it wasn't for Mr. Joe. On October 4, 2017, I created my YouTube channel, Andre Plays By Ear. I started creating some really cringy videos with my squeaky voice. Me and my mom just started making videos for fun, but pretty soon it was like part of our schedule. In June of 2018, I had my first concert. My friends, family, and teachers were even there. I played the Beatles tribute and sang, some, and sang to some of the songs. In early 2018, my, bad, my dad bought a white baby grand piano, which was in his hair salon. He put it there so I could play and get tips. Stayed in the salon for about a year. In late 2018, we moved the piano in my house. Since then, I've learned new songs, improved my music abilities, and got to love music even more. Thus concludes my autobiography. To be continued. Presentation by Andre Clark. Thank you for watching.